Russell Wilson <laughs> bet on himself, forcing his way out of Seattle, and he set a deadline that worked. September 1, got his new contract with the Broncos because it was a real artificial deadline, not a probably artificial deadline. <laughs> Yeah. Now that he's getting ready, Peter, to go back to Seattle, interesting subplot. Who do the fans blame for the divorce? Russell Wilson making it clear yesterday they should not be blaming him because even though he got traded and even though there's a perception he's the one that wanted out, Russell Wilson made it clear yesterday that he believes the Seahawks had been trying to trade him on multiple occasions before the trade actually happened. Have a listen to what he said on Thursday. Familiar with the article that came out with ESPN. Don't know if you read it. It suggested that they tried to trade you in 2018, only seven years in the league. It suggested that you and your camp were very upset about that. How true is that? Uh, I definitely think they tried to, you know, a couple times and try to see what was out there. It's part of the business and it's part of uh, being a professional and everything else. And uh, upset is probably the wrong word. Uh, I, I don't think uh, I don't think that, you know, I believe in my talent, who I am. You know, I believe I'm one of the best in the world. I don't worry about anything else other than that. So if upset isn't the right word, what is the right word? I, I didn't really pay attention to it, to be honest with you. It's part of professional sports, you know. Look. Chris Sims has been saying on this program for the past few years now, really before J Josh Allen became a superstar, because people are very skeptical about it when we say it now, but Chris said at least two, maybe three years ago, the Seahawks dangled Russell Wilson to the Browns in 2018 for the number one overall pick, not to take Baker Mayfield, to take Josh Allen, the year that he went number seven. And people are like, oh, nobody knew Josh Allen was going to be so great. Well, nobody knew Patrick Mahomes was going to be great either, and the Chiefs traded up to get him because they knew. They had a feeling he was going to be pretty good. The Seahawks had a feeling Josh Allen was going to be pretty good. They were willing to do that trade. It didn't happen. I've heard that the following year, at a time when Russell Wilson was trying to become the highest paid player in league history with his most recent contract extension in Seattle, the Seahawks toyed with and or actually explored trading Russell Wilson to the Arizona Cardinals for the first overall pick in 2019, with which they presumably would have taken Kyler Murray. And Peter, th th this is a simple matter of dollars and cents. If they had taken Josh Allen with the first pick in 2018, they would have paid him $32 million over four years. If they would have taken Kyler Murray with the first pick in 2019, they would have paid him $35.6 million over four years. Instead, they kept Russell Wilson at a contract worth $35 million per year. There's a point where the Seahawks were going to stop paying Russell Wilson market value money because they never fully embraced him on the field as a franchise quarterback through whom the offense runs, the guy who stirs the drink. He was never that guy in Seattle. At some point, they were not going to keep paying him like he's that kind of quarterback, and it was inevitable that there was going to be a divorce. And I think it's fair to call it mutual. I think both sides got to a point where this can't continue yeah. because they're not giving him another contract at the money he's going to want, and he wants to go somewhere where he is the centerpiece of the offense, not just a cog in a bigger machine that Pete Carroll has concocted that goes defense running game, and, oh, when we're down 10 points in the fourth quarter, maybe Russell will save our ass. Yeah, I agree with you. I think <clears throat> very much, <clears throat> excuse me, very much it was mutual, and <clears throat> that's one of the reasons why, <clears throat> you know, in the debate of what should happen when Russell Wilson runs onto the field and should he get a big ovation? Should he not? Look, I, I mean, I think this is one of the simplest things that I've ever, I've ever run into in this business. You know, when a guy who has done great things for your franchise, regardless of how it ended, when a guy has done great things for your franchise, brought you to two Super Bowls, won one, uh, when he comes back, the first time he comes back, I think it is, it's ridiculous to do anything but give the guy a tremendous ovation and to say thank you. I just, I, I, I don't understand why that wouldn't be the reaction based on the last 10 years of Seahawks football. I mean, just think before Russell Wilson got there. You know what this franchise was? It was a franchise that had some good moments and just had, uh, you know, a huge moment 
with uh, you know the upset of the Saints in the playoffs and you know but but what were they really? What were they? They were a nice little seven and nine, nine and seven, you know, a ten and six type team. And you know when Russell Wilson got there, he played there for ten years. They made the playoffs eight years. They went to the Super Bowl twice and won one in an absolute rout, and he never had a passer rating under 92. I mean, he was drafted after a punter 10 years ago. And so, you know what? Give John Schneider applause for having the guts to take him higher than anybody else. Good for you, John Schneider. And give Russell Wilson the credit he deserves for having transformed the Seattle Seahawks, from an okay franchise to a franchise playing to play deep into the playoffs every year. And this is the great test moving forward. Because some would say Russell Wilson was right place, right time, legion of boom. Not that he was average or would have been anything other than a star with another team but he enjoyed that high level of performance because they had such a great defense and when the legion of boom was dismantled around 2018 ish the seahawks haven't been as competitive as they were when they had that defense this is the pete carroll argument that it's not all about russell it's never been all about russell and i'm not comfortable making it all about russell the russell wilson argument is I can be Patrick Mahomes. I can be Aaron Rodgers. I can be Josh Allen. I can be the guy. Just let me be the guy. That was the underpinning of the whole let Russ cook mantra from 2020. And remember, it worked tremendously. You heard every time you turned on the TV or flipped on the radio or checked out the internet, hey, Russell Wilson has never gotten a single MVP vote in his entire career. This year he may get all of them. But then it all It all fell apart. They caught up to let Russ cook. They didn't make enough changes. They didn't self-scout themselves, as Chris would say, enough to stay ahead of the defenses (laughs) once they figured out what Russell Wilson and the offense was doing. This is the test, Peter. Nathaniel Hackett and the Broncos are going to let Russ cook all year long. Pete Carroll is going back to system, 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 defense, running game, efficiency, protect the football, all the coaching cliches from the 70s and 80s. That's what Pete Carroll – and and I, I kind of wish this game was being played later so both teams had a chance to just figure out who they were before we see this clash of cultures. But that's really what it is. Russell Wilson going from old school, you are just a piece of the puzzle, to new school, you are the guy. And who wins? That's what makes Monday night fascinating. Mike, I wrote about something in my column this week that uh, that basically kind of tells the tale of why Russell Wilson is so much happier now than he would have been had he stayed in Seattle. And that is, you know, the Monday before he signed the new contract, um, someone in the building told me that He's, this person said, hey, I, I'll tell you why Russell Wilson is happy right now. I, on Monday of this week, you know, he sat with Nathaniel Hackett for two, two to three hours in a room <clears throat> on a whiteboard with tape, just the two of them going over plays, going over what he liked, what Hackett wanted to do, the little wrinkle that Russell might have wanted to put in a specific play, but, and that is why he is happy now because he always wanted a guy who he could be partners with. Some coaches are going to be amenable to that. Nathaniel Hackett's amenable to it. The Broncos are amenable to it. Obviously in Seattle, it isn't that he didn't have the ability to go sit down with, you know, Brian Schottenheimer or, or whoever at the time, Shane Waldron recently, but he just feels a lot more empowered right now uh, about affecting the offense that he is going to run. We'll see if it works, but 
clearly that is the difference between Russell Wilson's <clears throat> level of happiness now and what it was late in his Seattle years. And again, listen, it's not necessarily that the Seahawks did the wrong thing. I don't think there is a right or wrong in this. <clears throat> One side got tired, both sides got tired of the constant headbutting in Seattle. And they just said, look, let's just make the best deal we can and move on with our lives. And Mike, I think you and I both realize that next year, when the Seattle Seahawks have their own first round pick and Denver's first round pick, they're gonna be sitting there with, let's just guess, the fifth and 20th picks overall, something like that. In a year where there could be some pretty good quarterbacks in the draft. So the Seahawks are going to have the ability, barring the miracle of either Geno Smith or or Drew Locke showing this year that they deserve to be the quarterback of the future in Seattle. But, but at some point, you have to just look at the pragmatism of this. And pragmatically, I think the Seahawks would rather be in position to either draft or somehow acquire their quarterback of the future than this constant headbutting they were doing with Russell Wilson especially because of what it was going to cost to keep him. Russell Wilson signed last week with the Broncos, a deal with a new money average, technically $48.5 million per year on a seven-year deal, five-year extension, $48.5 million on the extension. Trayvon Walker, the first overall pick in the 2022 draft, signed a four-year $37.4 million contract all in. It's about how much money you invest in the position. It's about having money for the positions around the quarterback, and that was the heyday of the Seattle Seahawks, year two and three of the Russell Wilson rookie contract. Year two, win the Super Bowl. Year three, almost win the Super Bowl, but for a fateful decision to pass and not run at the goal line. They could have had back-to-back -back before they ever gave Russell Wilson a second contract. So I think that's what's motivating this. It drives them crazy to pay that much money to a quarterback when they think they can find someone, even if they have to trade up to the top of the draft. If you go all the way to the top, you're still paying a lot less in four years than what Russell Wilson is making in one. One of the big issues for Monday night, what kind of a reception will there be for Russell Wilson when he goes back to Seattle? I don't quite think it'll be Brett Favre back to Lambeau Field as a member of the Vikings in 2009 where he was booed every time he stepped onto the field. But but it may not be as charitable, especially if Pete Carroll gets his way. Here's Pete sending a not-so-subtle message to the Seahawks fans as to how he would like to hear Russell Wilson be received on Monday night. Hey, you're either competing or you're not. I'm leaving up to 12th. And... Uh... You know, it's game time, and, and we're going for it. And so however they take it, I'll follow their lead on that. I mean, I'm not going to be involved with that kind of opportunity to react, you know, so I'm, I'm not, I don't have to make that decision. I, I will see what happens, but uh, I'm leaving up to the 12th. I think they'll know exactly what to do. Oh, you know, they'll know exactly what to do. Hey, 12s, you earned that jersey retirement not by being friendly to the enemy, but by being hostile, by being loud, by making it uncomfortable. So that's the license to boo. Don't feel bad. Don't feel like you're being inhospitable. Don't feel like you're not being appreciative. He's now wearing the colors of the enemy. React accordingly, Peter. That's the message from Pete Carroll. I mean, I guess so. <clears throat> I, I just, I don't know. You know, I just feel maybe it's because I'm 65 years old. I don't feel like everything is all of a sudden the, 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 the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl and every play is the most important play you'll ever play. I mean, let's be a little human here. Just, just be a little human. Uh, you know, be, be grateful for what you have. And part of that gratitude in Seattle, you know, you're being, I, I don't know. I, I will be, I'll be surprised and disappointed if at some point, 
either maybe when he first runs out or whatever it is, that he doesn't get a huge ovation. Now, I guess from the sound of it, he's not going to get a huge ovation. I just, I think it's small. I just think it's small. I think it's wrong. Well, and whatever, whatever anybody would think about, oh, let's compete, let's compete, all's fair in love and war and everything. Okay. I mean, all right. I, I, I don't get it. It's just not, that's not the way I would do it. But again, to each his own. Well, and you said it, it's a time to be human. Human nature would cause many to skew toward using the occasion and the opportunity to boo Russell Wilson. And Pete Carroll just wants to win this game. He wants to win this game, and he understands the value of that stadium that has been specifically designed to maximize the direction of the crowd noise toward the opposing sideline and to make it as uncomfortable as possible because that's how you win the game. And Pete Carroll wants to prove, if nothing else, that he was right to move on from Russell Wilson. Everybody knows he's the one calling the shots ultimately in Seattle. They really don't have an owner per se. It's Pete Carroll running that football operation. He decided, let's move on from Russell Wilson. Let's not pay Russell Wilson. We can win without him. And uh, all's fair, definitely, because all Pete Carroll cares about is emerging from Monday night 1-0. and And it will help if it's even more uncomfortable than it otherwise would be for Russell Wilson to operate. Let's go ahead and take a break. Plenty of other week one games we will rip through as many as we can when this friday edition of pft live continues right after this hi it's mike florio thanks for watching pft on youtube hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from pro football talk